every city has their priorities. And, and let's face it, if you go in and say, why don't we re-architect your city and have all your different disciplines going through the same control center, uh, it's just not going to happen. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, these organizations have their day-to-day -day lives. So what we have to do is solve problems. And that problem might be sort of water leak detection, um, as we have over in our stand today. Um, uh, so with a lot of water being less, uh, we're losing about 25 to 50 percent of water in a lot of cities uh, in Europe because we've got very old pipes. Um, it could be about bus timing and finding the best route to pick up uh, users. Uh, so we're doing that a lot in Asia. Uh, you know, so each, each city has its pain point and you've got to start with the pain point, otherwise there's no money. We're doing things in terms of transportation, traffic control. We've just done a project with an expressway. At 950 points in the road, we're measuring every 30 seconds, you know, pollution, uh, traffic speed, uh, the weather, you name it. You've got to be able to process that data very quickly and you'll be able to store it so that you can take advantage of it when you're planning uh, your future infrastructure. And what we find when we talk to, to smart cities, to, to, sorry, to city mayors, is actually they've got a lot of data already, but they don't know what to do with it. Or what they really want to do is sell it to the private, se private sector. So what we're doing is helping them to have the sort of intelligent infrastructure to have a digital city so they can pull all the information in from all the sensors, to, you know, understand energy consumption, uh, pollution, noise levels, and then be able to give that to the private sector for them to exploit. We've just won an award in Australia for the uh, education online service we've done there. Um, we're doing smart energy projects and you know a lot of areas in the city have uh, power overconsumption uh, issues so we have battery technology that in the future we can use um, to provide caches of energy to smooth out the peaks and troughs uh, we're doing as I say water uh, water leak detection at the end of the day NEC is a very you know broad and capable company and, and I think the important thing is really that we want to engage with cities to find out what that problem is and even if it's something that we haven't done before it's something we probably like to do it's not always just the city giving information to the private sector. You know, I know car companies that are uh, that we're working with that are monitoring the shock absorbers in the car and the tires. So, for example, we're able to tell where the accidents are happening. We're able to pass the information from the shock absorbers back to the city to say where the holes in the road are. And in the future, you know, they may get sued for it because now we're able to really understand the damage being done to the car, you know, on a very detailed level. So we're able to save the city's money protecting itself to be able to deal with, for example, road quality before it becomes a problem. If you go to the mayor, sometimes a mayor wants to do a smart city and that's great. But quite often it's really about finding a problem through system integration partners, uh, through public initiatives. Um, through uh, your own experiences in the city and interacting at whatever partnership level will, will actually do the business. Because, you know, there's, there's no golden money, there's no golden check that says we need to have smart cities. It's one problem at a time.